happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. And in solution, Kate. In out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Totterbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my most awesome videos. In front of us we have the Sanjin ATS909X2. This is an AM FM stereo long wave short wave with single sideband airband portable radio. The ultimate. That's what they're calling it. Uh, here's the box it came in. You get this off Amazon currently at the time of this video for $225. There might be coupons to get it cheaper. Um, represents a decent bargain if you get a good model. We'll talk about mine here as we review this. Here's the box. You can see the band information. It's got illustration on the front. This box is kind of hard to move around here to show you, but let's show you the contents, what you get. A few little uh, bullet points there. Got their name, Sanjin. Quite the box here. They kind of did oversized. Kind of a cool color picture there. Showing the globe, nice. And the back side here, we got more bullet points. Just gonna show them. I'm gonna go over the manual as quick as I can because there's a lot to cover with this radio and I have a short amount of time to show it to you. So let's go ahead and just go through some cool things. There you go, pretty awesome. Okay, so that's the box. I took everything out to make it easy. Let's go ahead and show you what you get in the box. So I'm gonna lower the tripod down. Downtown. Okay, so first thing I pulled out was a set of headphones. These look nice. Same ones you get with their premium uh, radios. I haven't tried them on yet, but I think they'll be pretty nice. They also came with little uh, foam caps if you prefer those. Nice, cool. Uh, next, we get the shortwave antenna reel. Um, this is the ANT60. Plugs right into the radio. You can reel it in. I think it's 22 foot. You can hang it from a tree limb here, a little clip, um, or a different places, uh, or like high up on your ceiling if you can't go outside with the antenna. Uh, good to have. These make a big difference. So, great. They include that. I think it's like a $15 antenna. Next, you get an AC adapter. Um, they give you uh, a nice little iron ferrite choke here, I think. Here is the specs on the device. There you go. 9 volt, 1.2 amps output. So it's the correct one for the radio. And it will charge nickel metal hydride batteries, which is nice. All right, so what else do we have? The manual. So yeah, I'm gonna kind of skirt through this really quickly because I wanna to get to the radio because the radio has a lot of features, as you can see from this page right here. <laughs> um, I wanna to get to the pertinent facts that uh, are most important, um, but uh, you can download this manual, I believe, off their website. So if you're wondering, uh, what it can all do. It's all here. So first thing is direct tuning. I like to show you that. That's how you have to enter in the frequencies, FM. You have to use a decimal point. Shortwave, you do not have to. Um, I believe you can as an option. Airband, you have to enter the decimal point. So you get the idea. Okay, uh, on the medium wave, you don't, and long wave, you don't. Uh, over here, uh, stepping. There you go for fast, slow, um, for fine tuning control, there you have that. Okay, it's important. That should it to you. So those are the ones I'm gonna be bringing up here. Uh, presets, there's a lot of presets. We'll go over that um, as I talk about the radio, but I'll just quick show that to you on that page. Um, you can do quite a bit. I love the preset locking this has. Um, I love it, it's just amazing. Uh, let's see, shortwave. Uh, scanning. This is a great shortwave broadcast receiver. It's not so great with single sideband, unfortunately. And a lot of people know that, but I'm definitely going to bring that to your attention. Uh, there is your bandwidth controls. You have FM, which is interesting. If you see that, you got three choices. Medium wave, you get five. Short wave, you get five. And air band, you get three. Single sideband, you get zero. That is also a problem. Uh, yeah, we'll hopefully be able to dial a ham in. I don't know if I'll be able to, but yeah, it'll be interesting. Squelch feature. Okay, what else? Just want to go over, like I said, the facts. Uh, menu, I'll go over the menu with you. Um, it's a pretty basic menu. There's your menu choices here. Um, if I get that all in there, um, you can see that it's got quite a few options that are nice. Uh, what else we have? Uh, yeah, you got display information, which is kind of interesting. They have a digital uh, display of the signal and signal noise ratio now, 
which is a nice little addition. And of course, RDS information. This radio is an FM champ, just to let you know. I love it. <laughs> uh, technical data. Okay, so we're getting to the technical part. Do like to show you that. And then we'll get to the radio. I know. Five minutes in, I got to show you the radio. So there's some band information. You can adjust the FM. Okay, I'll talk about that. Full coverage uh, on shortwave. And I think back here, more specifications. It runs on 4 AA batteries, 24 hours of listening with uh, probably moderate volume. Five hours to charge 2100 milliamp hour batteries. Not bad. Charging current, half amp. Uh, so that's good to know. Some more information there, which we'll go over, and how to read your serial number and the weight of the radio. There you are. Okay, so let's get to the radio. I always like to spend a little time on the manual. The radio is pretty nice. It's just like the 909X that it replaces. Here we are, front and center. I'm going to zoom in on down. All right, let's go over dimensions. Uh, it's eight and a quarter inches in length. That includes the volume knob here. It's five and a quarter inches tall, and it has a thickness of one and a half inches. So for size comparison, I always bring out a few radios. I have a CC Pocket always handy here. Give you a general idea. I am filming this during the day. It's almost 12 p.m., which is nice. Um, I find that the air band's more active during the day, and maybe we'll pick up some hams um, or some shortwave broadcasts during the day as well. Uh, there we go. So we got CC Skywave. And of course, last but not least, we have Iron Man. He's the man with the master plan. He loves shortwave radios from Sanjin Land. Iron Man, sing it with me. <laughs> Standard playing cards to give you an idea for size. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we got that out of the way. So features of the Sanjin 909X2. Uh, for $225, you do get a cool radio. Um, it has a lot of cool features. Um, but again, if you're in a single sideband, uh, use this radio as it sits right now. If they're going to improve it, I'm not sure. Um, it would be a big pass. So if you're looking at this video right now, it's a big pass. Uh, check out the links below. I'm going to link to the PL880, the PL990, uh, and some other, uh, like the Eaton Executive Elite and a D808. Those are great radios for single sideband use. Uh, I recommend those. If you're going to be using external antennas and just do shortwave broadcasts, like medium wave and shortwave, and you're not going to be doing single sideband at all, then this radio is a champ. It has auto uh, bandwidth control. I'm going to show you in a moment. So it's what throw, throw that in there really quick in the beginning. So let's go look at some features of this radio. On the left-hand side, it looks just like the 909X it replaces. We have an AM external antenna jack. You can plug in a twin coil uh, from C-Crane uh, antenna system. It works fantastic. I'm going to have some videos of that in action with medium wave full band scans with that device. Uh, and of course, you could plug in your wire that they give you for shortwave. Here we have auxiliary in for MP3 players. You turn it on by hitting the on button there. Disables the radio and goes to the auxiliary in. We have recording, standby, and line out. Uh, it works well with the DAR, uh, Sanjin, uh, digital recorder. So you have three timers on this radio, and when the timer activates, it'll turn the recorder on and start recording. Headphone jack for FM stereo listening. FM, uh, the headphone experience is pretty good. There's no low-level hiss. FM has heavy lows, strong mids, and decent highs. I recommend running the normal mode. When you have it on the music mode with headphones, it's a little bit too heavy on the lows. That's what I noticed. A medium wave shortwave airband, uh, the tone uh, in the middle is perfect for talk and sports and even music. So I, do, I definitely enjoyed the headphone experience. Up here we have the attenuator for gain on the medium wave and shortwave. So it goes all the way down to minimum. We're going to leave it on maximum. Okay. Here we have DC input, 9 volts, 1.2 amps. No polarity is standard. Let's go to the front of the radio. We have a three inch speaker. Sounds beautiful. It's an upgrade over the previous radio. Large LCD display, uh, larger than the net, uh, X that it replaces. Uh, you get your local time, and you can switch up here to the uh, world time by pressing twice and conf confirming it. Now we're on UTC. Uh, and of course, I can go back to home by double clicking and going back to home by Chicago, Illinois. There you go. So that's the current time. Over here, single strength indicator will show up. Uh, we'll have our big frequency information when we turn the radio on. Page number in the blue box here. RDS information in this rectangular box. And, of course, signal noise ratio. And down below, we'll have memory presets will show up. And we'll, we'll show that as I turn the radio on. 
Over here, we got a lot of buttons. We have airband with P-scan. That means page scan. So this is like a nine channel scanner. It works really well. Hopefully we'll be able to show that to you in action today. Uh, FM, we have uh, FM with ATS, auto tuning storage. Uh, it tunes, it's, if you do auto tuning storage, it saves the strongest stations uh, over the weakest. And then, and then if you do it again, it overwrites any weaker stations with stronger stations it finds. Uh, down here we have long wave, medium wave button with the ATS, and then we have short wave with ATS, and of course the meter band. If you want to access meter, you hit this button, and you choose one of the numeric keypads with the meter band printed on there. It'll take you directly to that meter band, if you can see that. And of course, you got the numeric keypad to recognize the frequencies by hitting F for frequency and the band you want, or the frequency you want to do. Like I mentioned, decimal points for certain bands like FM and air band is required. Uh, we have a cancellation key to delete memories. M is to manually enter memories, and enter is to confirm. Enter now, it'll show me my version of my radio. It's 073. Above here, we got the three timers to set your alarms. Uh, you can wake to buzzer, wake to music, single sideband button. Over here with a bandwidth control for manually changing our bandwidth. And then you look above it, it says M with a key. That means memory lock. So you can memory lock presets so they don't get wiped out if you accidentally do an ATS by mistake. It happens to some people and it's very annoying. Here you can lock your presets. That's awesome. This radio has a total of 1,674 presets divided into three memory banks. Each one holds 558 presets. In each bank, you can have 45 airband, 36 FM, 27 medium wave, 9 long wave, and 441 short wave. I'd rather have more on the medium wave versus short wave. That's just me. Page button to change the pages. Uh, edit, so you can edit your preset names. Medium wave, long wave, sh uh, not short wave, airband, FM. You can actually name the exact frequency you're on. For short wave, you can only uh, do the page you're on. So it's kind of nice you can do that. Info button for RDS information and for signal strength indicator, what memory bank you're on. Uh, and I'll show you that. We'll cycle through it. Menu, press and hold. And we got soft mute, that's for FM. We can change our memory bank here. FM stepping, FM range. You got three ranges of FM. Uh, I think it's uh, 64 to 108, 76 to 108, 87 to 108. Try to go as quick as I can. <laughs> Single sideband stepping, it has 10 hertz or 20 hertz. I thought that was kind of interesting. A beep on or off, we'll leave it on. It's not too bad. Scan delay, you can change the scan delay. Um, one second. This is really nice for the uh, scanning the airband. One second seems pretty good, so we'll leave it there. Uh, version again, factory reset, time, manual setting, or RDS set for the time, time format, and backlight. You can change from 10 seconds, 20, or 30 seconds that the light stays on if you're using the light. And if I'm stereo or if I'm mono mode, and of course, soft mute again. So we're out of that. Power, sleep function, charge status indicator. If you're using the AC adapter and nickel metal hydride batteries, this light will turn on, it's charging. Here we have the light. You can change the brightness. And while the radio is on, the light will stay on if you push this light, which is nice. We'll turn it off. Here we have the squelch button for the airband. Tuning buttons, similar to the 909X, uh, so here we have two buttons for quick tuning. Uh, seek, browse, so we can browse up, browse down the band. And of course, press and hold, quickly go through the band. Here's the jog wheel. You can go coarse tuning or slow tuning or fine tuning. And then you have stepping. You can change it right here in the middle for the jog wheel. You can actually disable the wheel as well. Right inside the radio, we have our volume control. We have switches, bandwidth. This is really neat. It's got manual or auto bandwidth. I'll try to show that in action. Uh, FM, it's fantastic. Airband, it works well. Shortwave, it works well. Uh, medium wave, not so much in the evening, but during the day, it's okay. Tone control, normal. Most of the time, music when you're on FM with the speaker. And then, of course, we have our lock switch. Bottom of the radio, we have a reset. And it looks like a programming from the factory. It has an A, B pin, so they can update the radio. So that's kind of nice. They come up with an update to help something out. Top of the radio, we have time set, daylight saving time, and, of course, world home time. Our antenna is 46 inches long. It pulls up over here to clear the cabinet, which is really nice. It's made of stainless steel, like in that. And yeah, 15 minutes in, I haven't turned it on yet. I know I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, the back here, flip out stand with the time chart. Um, you can see here we have four AA batteries. Inside, let's see if I can get this battery door open on camera. Always, there we go, I got it. Uh, always a struggle. There's four AA batteries 
individual bays for charging, which is nice. There's two little switches. One is for alkaline or nickel metal hydride. And then the next one over there is 9K or 10K stepping. So they put a switch in there separate for the stepping, which is surprising they would do that. Why don't they make that a menu choice? That would have been better. Okay, so there is everything. So let's go ahead and turn us on, right? Um, so we are going to go ahead and talk about FM reception. Uh, this thing scored an amazing score. Of uh, so I do a five-tier method. Fair, okay, good. I'm just trying to get this antenna to clear the case. There we are. I'm going to extend this 46-inch antenna all the way up so we can listen to the air band and maybe some FM. Okay. Yeah, so on the FM, uh, I always like to search every station I can find, and I'd go from fair, um, okay, good, very good, excellent. Uh, cheaper radios, old school radios like this, get an okay to good rating, two and a half star on FM. I typically find about 48 stations in my location. Um, that's old school. Uh, this is new school. It has a DSP chip in there, digital signal processor, does amazing on FM. This thing found 90 stations. It gets an excellent five-star rating. Um, this Sanjins. Sanjins just, they push the envelope. This one does. Absolutely amazing. RDS captures very quick. If you're a person that likes to have RDS quickly, if you're if you're DXing with your Sanjin, you're going to love this radio for that. It's just absolutely amazing. Um, and in selectivity, it gets uh, very good, excellent, so four and a half star rating. So for FM, this is just a beautiful radio. I love it. Um, so let's go ahead and turn it on. We're going to do an audio demonstration real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and go to FM. Right now we have radio waves. I can name the preset, which is nice. We're greeted with our battery life indicator. We have our time still showing. Bandwidth we're on. You can actually change the bandwidth for FM. You can narrow it, widen it, or put it in normal, which I think is 85. Yeah, that's 85 kilohertz, uh, 65, and then 110 is the wide one. So we'll leave it on 85. Full strength. So we'll run this for about a minute or two. I'm using a C crane from Transmitter 2 on the same frequency with an MP3 player. Broadcasting royalty free music. FM stereo, band we're on, page we're on, preset we're on. Of course, it's locked, so you can't delete it by mistake. Of course, I named it. Change the info. Signal strength. Signal is ratio. Memory bank. Tone control. That's news. Normal. Yeah, because I only have limited time here. Uh, I'm going to be doing full FM band scans, full AM medium wave band scans. So right now we're going to go right to air band. Um, let's go ahead and jump there. We'll go back to FM in a little bit. Now the neat thing here 
Okay, so hopefully pick something up because I'm filming during the day. We're going to go scan. So I'm going to press and hold. I have nine frequencies I picked out that are fairly active during the day. Uh, we'll put the bandwidth to auto. So I'll say auto up there. I'm going to run it with no squelch, though you could change it here. Let's go ahead and press this. See if we can't pick something up here. Here, I'll check our A1. So it makes a nice channel, uh, nine channel scanner. It goes fairly quick and it pauses properly, just like a normal Just like a normal scanner, and it has a great uh, band scan, uh, auto tuning with the band scan. Now, the air band, uh, let's see here, um, I had showed it in the book, uh, it's bandwidth. It has uh, six kilohertz, four kilohertz, and two kilohertz. Of course, I have more stations. I could switch pages. And I could name these, of course, too. Well, if I figured out one was Chicago O'Hare Tower, uh, Approach. Um, I could do all that, like local airports. So pretty neat to show you this. It's working, yeah, because it's during the day. <laughs> Ah, uh, cool. So let's go ahead and go to FM. Yeah, I could be here all day listening to that. All right. So we'll go to FM. Let's go ahead and uh, tune to the bottom of the band. We'll just do a few stations, kind of show you the RDS information. The men around her, specifically her husband. Did you see RDS? any people protesting the protesters, counter-protests? Oh, of course. This is a country protest, so there was a counter-demonstration led by an Islamic movement. And, you know, not surprisingly, it was men with loudspeakers shouting things like, the hijab is my adornment. Hijab. So you got the fine-tuning, 50 kilohertz steps. Medishare works. It's been around for more than a quarter century, and members have shared more than $3 billion of each other's bills. People love having tell Faster tuning. Something that I think that healthcare providers, um, all healthcare providers of all racial ethnic groups, have to think about. So with FM, yeah, I'm gonna have a full uh, FM band scan for you guys. So yeah, I'm jumping pretty quickly here, uh, but uh, I'm gonna give you a basic overview. Hypertension among Let's go. Uh, populations. Is this the? Is this leading to? Let's show you the uh, shortwave. I'm up in a 20 meter band here. We're going to search for some hams. See if I can pick anything up. Um, I'll leave it on auto bandwidth. And we'll slow it down to 1 kilohertz. And I believe voice is going to start up a little later at uh, 14150. So let's go to voice. I haven't been able to pick up CW. Actually, that is right there. So we'll go upper sideband. See how quiet it gets. Crank the volume. Slow tuning. Barely picking that up. No bandwidth control. You can see it auto went off. Barely picking that up. Full volume. Okay, I'm gonna turn this down. Turn sideband off. Let's see if we get somebody talking. Digital modes. Somebody talking here. Don't know if I'll pick it up.
this is maxed out. So yeah, full volume, no bandwidth control, could barely make them out. Let's uh, go out of this, I gotta turn this down, otherwise we're gonna blow the speaker. Gotta remember to do that. I will see if we can't find some standard broadcasts. A chore. It's not fun for hand hunting. Try one more time. Upper side band. barely hear it. So yeah, this is kind of the experience I'm getting with this. It's not fantastic on single side band whatsoever. Okay, so let's go ahead, turn that off. We'll go short wave, we'll pick a meter band. Uh, let's go 19 meters. Let's tune down from here. And we'll see if there's anything in this band. There we go. WWV. Under Chicago, Illinois. And it goes fairly quick. Um, and of course, you can save them. Uh, you get, like I say, 440 per bank. So it's quite a bit. <laughs> 441 to be exact. Um, so yeah, it's going to... Daytime does pretty good. I pick up about a dozen or so stations, typically local. Uh, I'm downstairs with my, just a whip antenna running. I'm not running an external outside antenna. So it actually is a much better radio with its uh, internal and external antennas. Okay, so my radio has issues. Uh, one is, um, two, I can press one, but two... My button two is kind of funky. Doesn't always register. I have to like push hard to get it to go to two. One, three, very easy. But two has a problem. So also this radio has uh, spurious tones, unfortunately, which I'll show videos of it in action. But like on uh, 640. Even with this auto uh, tuning, turn that off. You can hear that uh, tune, the tone. It's very uh, annoying, and I get it during the day and the evening. I got on 670 and a bunch on the evening. Otherwise. The radio is actually uh, lovely on medium wave. Crazy or bad idea? Well, the interesting thing. P500 up by 61. The wind trust WBBM Chicago index from Bloomberg is up one and a half percent, and West Texas. Uh, as Al Franken said in his recent podcast, a, a POS. We're using words that I can't. So there you go. I'm going to have four medium wave band scans, of course. Um, an airband FM scan, a uh, shortwave, uh, I may or may not, depending. Um, so let me go ahead and turn this off. Uh, we'll do final thoughts on the Sanjin 909 X2 uh, and tell you what I think about this radio. Um, I waited quite a while to get it. Everybody's like wondering why I didn't pick it up right away. Well, you always want to wait for bugs to get worked out. And I was hoping that this radio would have bugs worked out of it, and it didn't. <laughs> this thing has spurious tones, and it's going back. Because those tones are so loud on medium wave and short wave during the night. 
on the lower part of the band between 2 megahertz and 5 megahertz. This thing has total, these tones are just crazy, spurious tones. Definitely internal because when I hook up an external antenna, they go away. So it's definitely internally generated. It's unfortunate. Plus it has this weird uh, sound when you're going through the medium wave band uh, with the jog wheel. Uh, but that's another case. Somebody else has the same problem in Europe with their version, 073. Um, again, uh, this is supposed to be the new, one of the newest versions. supposed to be okay. A lot of people have this radio and, and like it. But I'll be honest with you, most people are going to buy it for single sideband use. And they're not going to be happy because volume goes way down. And as you heard, it was very difficult to hear much of anything. Um, even The transmissions have to be really close. Uh, to get any kind of volume and hear anybody. So if, if you want a single sideband radio, check out the links below. Pick out one of those. Don't pick up this one yet. Um, I'm going to return this one because it has spurious tones. My number two key doesn't work well. Um, and the fact that you have no bandwidth control on single sideband and single sideband's weak. So this goes back. And in a year, I'm going to buy it again. So this about this time, same time in a year from now, I'm going to buy it again and re-review it. Hopefully, everything will be worked out. Uh, because it does make an excellent FM receiver. I absolutely love it. I love the airband. It's like, it's more sensitive than my Bearcat. Uh, medium wave is fantastic with the internal antenna versus the older model. The speaker's upgraded, which sounds fantastic. So they've added quite a bit to this radio. Better charging for the batteries. Um, it's important. I love the screen. It's much larger. Uh, a lot more information displayed. Um, they did a great job there. The light's really nice. Um, so, yeah, it's just a, a great upgrade. It's just a few things are missing. So th there you are. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. went a little long. Um, give me a big like if you did. Um, two, if you like Sanjay Radio, subscribe at the bell icon. Three, comment below if you're going to pick up this 909 X2. I'll have links below to it as well. Because um, some people might just want to listen to normal broadcasts. And they don't care about single sideband. If you don't care about single sideband and you get a radio with working buttons and no spurious tones... This one's for you. Definitely an amazing radio. But if you're going to use single sideband, which the majority of my viewers want, you're going to want to pass on this model for sure. So there's my verdict. <laughs> uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. Take care, and we'll see you in my next video.